your your stats to me are really interesting. I talked about 12, 13, 14, 15 mm-hmm. in the modified tour, winning the championship second three times. And in 16, you go Xfinity racing, and you run the whole series, mm-hmm. one top 10, yeah. and not a whole lot to, you know, to, to, yeah. to really hang your hat on. What... What did you What did you think at that point? You were so successful in the mods. Mm-hmm. Now you're getting to run NASCAR, which is something that you really wanted to do. But 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 you're not you're not getting the finishes, the results. Where, where, where were you mentally in in that year? I was ready to go. I mean, it, it wasn't one of those where you uh, where you want to be a big sm- big big fish in a small pond, go home and go racing. I just want to race to win. And <clears throat> you know, nothing against the team I was driving for at the time, but I didn't feel like we were going to be able to win unless, you know, something crazy happened at a super speedway or whatever it may have been. It was just, that's, that's what I felt. I didn't feel like we could compete with JGR or the RCRs or the Roushes or, you know, all the other elite teams that were there. And it's like, man, I'm a racer. I'm just like, I've come from winning, you know, I was winning anywhere from 15 to 20 races a year to, to not even feeling like I could contend. And and that's part of that being on that side of the garage. You don't have tires every time you pit. Yeah. There's just th- there's other obstacles that you got to deal with. So like you're talking about stats. Yeah, it, it's frustrating. I got one top 10 at Darlington and that was it. And um but you had to walk away from there thinking it's a top 10 at Darlington. Yeah. Darn it. Uh yeah, but that was, you know, at, at the time too, um that was kind of strategy worked out really well. It wasn't you know, I, I like earning things, and uh, I didn't. I didn't completely feel like I earned that top ten. You know, it was we, we ended up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So seventeen's a whole different story. Yep. I know you're racing your mod. How did you get together with JGR and get those four races? And then the way you performed was just awesome. Yeah. So <clears throat> when uh, obviously everybody knew Carl Edwards retired and Daniel moved up, I lived in Kevin Mannion Bono's race shop when I was down here. And when I moved home, when all that happened, I had the TV on. I knew what was going on. And he called me. He said, hey, you need to call Steve D'Souza. And what happened was is I raced for so many good people and had really good relationships with them. They knew that if I got the right opportunity that I would do what I did. And I believed in it. There was no if, ands, or buts. There was no I'm not going to – I'm going to finish fifth. I'm going to do this. There was I'm going to win. I'm going to do whatever it took. And um, so – as soon as I got done talking to Steve, you know, I had multiple people along with some backers that helped me make it possible. And, uh, you know, it comes down to the right place at the right time. I think we all, you hear people talk about it all the time. I'm sure you've been there mm-hmm. along with seen it by multiple time, multiple people. And, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by the people that I've been surrounded by and, and that I'm still friends with to this day. And I still talk to them on a weekly basis. So in the discussion with Steve, they said, we got four races. If you want them, you can. It was two races, actually. Ah. Yeah. So, so it was bought... only supposed to be two. Right. Yeah. So you were able to get sponsorship, run two races, mm-hmm. and, and you won <clears throat> Iowa. I won Iowa and finished second in New Hampshire to Kyle. And yep. so you're. You're thinking, I knew I was right. Well, I was, and you want to know what? And I remember I was sitting under the, I, I'll, when I got the call to run Kentucky, uh, I was sitting under pulling the transmission out, getting ready to go run Loudon on the modified tour in like a week. So I, it, that was a complete like, okay, here we go. This is another opportunity I got to do. We got to. We got to do what we can to win this one too. Yeah. And uh, Gabe Hart, Chris Gabe Hart, was the crew chief. And uh, we were running second to Reddick, Tyler Reddick at the time, and that was when the 42, I mean, they were just so fast at, at Kentucky. And, and him and I both agreed, we, we're both racers. We want to win that race. So he's like, all right, I can take a big swing at it. I'm like, just do it. All right, well, we do that, and we're, fin- we're running second. I mean, I am looser than Steve Kinzer, you know, out there. So <laughs> we, uh, we definitely did what we needed. You know, we tried to do what we thought we needed to do, and we ended up fourth that race. But, uh I had a lot of fun with those guys, for it, sure. It was so cool to see you come on the scene and, and know that everything that had gone into it, and then you get the results. So, you know, you get the, the, the accomplishments of having having the success. And then it led to where you are today. Mm-hmm. And, and where you are today, <clears throat> I think, is interesting because you've been here before. You're in a team. You're with a team that's, that's awesome. I love Tad and Jody. I love all the marketing they do, and the cars – 
are 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 nearly there. Yeah. But you know, you you're just a notch off, uh, whether it's setup or arrow, whatever it is. But you're a notch off, and when you start a season like you have in 2019, how do you departmentalize and keep everything straight in your brain to go out and and do the best you can? That's tough. I think you know, just like any racer, racing's full of highs and full of a lot of lows. And they can really get you down, but there's times, you know, that's why that's why I continue to race my modified and do those because it keeps you keeps you going like, okay, I won here. I know it's <laughs> at this stage, but I still won. Like, you know what I mean? But uh, going back, JTG, I said this at the beginning of the season, they aren't, you know, it's not, <clears throat> it's not the same situation because they are a very well-funded team. You know, thanks to Kroger, Maxwell House, and and all our partners, um, they they have tires every week. I joke with Ernie Cope, who's who's the competition director, and Tad. When I sat down with them, uh, one of the first questions I asked was, "Do you guys buy the full allotment of tires?" <laughs> because <laughs> that's you know, that's, I don't. That's don't, the way you've been your whole life. If we don't have tires, we can't win. Yeah, pretty much. So it's uh, you know they have brand new cars. They build brand new cars. It's all in house. Uh, they they have a Hendrick Motorsports uh, engine deal with them, and we we're provided with great power. So we have the tires, we have the chassis, we hang our own bodies, and we have the power. I I, I don't see. It. I mean, I know there's a lot of technology that goes into these things, but you've seen the you've seen the stories where the, the underdog ends up beating the big dog. Yes, and I feel like if hard work's put there, um, if the hard work's put in and and everything everything aligns, you'll see that story again. 